All right, hey, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. Our goal at the Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program like yourself. In today's lesson, we're going to cover the items listed right here. If you are not familiar with those items, hey, no worries, stick around. We're going to jump right in. Alright, hey, let's go ahead and get started. Before we do so though, I just want to mention if you like this video and in the end, go ahead and, and you know click that subscribe button below. That helps us a lot. Uh, go ahead and tell others about the coding zoo and our goal to help others learn how to program. If you do like this video, click the like button. And if you don't, in the end, click dislike and just leave us a message. Let us know how we can improve. Leave us a message. Let us know if you have any questions. Our goal is to help others learn how to program like yourself. So we will get back in touch with you. Let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson. Okay, hey, so this lesson we're going to cover uh, bounded types, parameterized types, generics. So in the previous lesson, we talked about what a generic is in Java. We also covered how to create your own generic. We gave you an example by creating a grade book, and that grade book was a parameterized type that took in different types of grades. Now, the two different types of grades we used for an example were test grades and homework grades. So we created these objects called homework grade and we created an object called test grade. All right. So we wanted to have two different types of grade books and we wanted to put homework grades in one and test grades in the other and we didn't want to mix those two up. So that was our example. Now that may not be a great example but hopefully it makes sense. I wanted to create a grade book that could store a particular type but only that type that's specified in the code as you're coding it. Um, but it can cover more than just one type. So I wanted to, depending upon how you created it. So if we go to this create method here, we created a grade book that, that took in only test grades. And we created a grade book that took in only homework grades. So you can add homework grades to the homework grade book and you can add test grades to the test grade book. So that was how we created a parameterized type called gradebook. Now, there's one flaw with the way this gradebook is created. I've got test grades and I've got homework grades. Well, what what hap what keeps me from specifying something else? I could say grade book, and for the parameter, I don't have to specify homework grade or test grade. I could specify string. Will that work? Let's see. Grade book dash add student grade Shane. So look at there. So now while grade book is a ge generic, it is a parameterized type. Uh, it was cr it was created to where you were where you would keep grades and you would only keep certain types of grades and you would keep those types of grades in separate grade books, right? Well, this just allowed me to create a grade book that takes in strings. It has nothing to do with grades. I can actually pass in my name instead of a grade, right? So this is somewhat flawed. The way I originally created this grade book is somewhat flawed. How would I fix that? Well, you would do that by making this a bounded type. How would I bind this grade book creation to only be able to be parameterized with grades and not strings. How would I go about doing that? Well, let's go back over to gradebook. Well, I need to, I need to change my definition up to do that. What's one way I can do that? Well, if you look over here at homework grade, you'll see that homework grade extends grade, right? And you'll see that inside of grade, uh, it's got the value, right? That's the base class. So I have a subclass called homework grade and I have a subclass called test grade. They both extend grade. Because they both extend grade, that is one way I can use to bind my grade book, make it a bounded parameterized type to grades. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna change this definition up. Instead of T, I'm gonna do T extends 
grade. So my grade book takes in anything that extends grade. So there we go. That is called a bounded type. I bound this grade book to only take in objects that can only have parameters that are objects that extend grade. And I still kept the same constraints, right? So if I go back over here, you'll see now that this won't compile. String is not allowed anymore. I just bound the grade book to where that's not allowed. What is allowed? Well, homework grade book is allowed and test grade grade book is allowed. Why? Because they both extend grade. So this is called a bounded parameterized type. I've basically created a grade book and that grade book can only be parameterized with objects that extend grade. Hey, pretty neat. That's another way to basically tie down your data structures to be a specific type to, to keep from having runtime issues later on and to catch errors up front at compile time. That's one way of doing it. All right, so hey, that's it for today. I hope that makes a lot of sense. If you have any questions, leave us a message below. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click subscribe below and click that bell icon. That helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. Let others know, if you enjoyed this video, let others know about our YouTube channel. Send them our way. We really appreciate it. If you like the video, also click like. If you dislike, click dislike too. Leave us a message. Let us know how we can improve. Leave us a message. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll definitely get back to you. So that's it for today. I just want to say thank you, and I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.